seem to run out of coffee. Because um, we've had I've had issues with my teaching. People can hear us. Can you hear us? Let us know that our voices are coming through. Can you see it? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Let us know. I look like an um, egg. I look like a big egg. You look all right. You look good. I do look like an egg. I'd wonder if people can hear us. We're waiting to see if people can hear us. Uh, and if Papa, can, can you hear, hear us, us? Then we'll continue with the show. Um, 
So can you hear us? Then we'll see you. Okay, people can see and hear us. See, that's how long the delay is. Oh, it's been a long time. I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, oh We're Scylla. here. Scylla's here. Pam- oh, it's been like a month, hasn't it? Pampai's here. We're all here again. It's been a month. A month. Four weeks, it says on there. Now, the exciting thing is... Not only are we here, not only is Pam Pai here, not only is Scylla Black here, but Chris Nibbles is here. Chris Nibbles has missed so, so many of these. So we actually have Nibbles and Bubbles. But thanks to a new house. career change, he is here tonight. Yeah, Chris is now running a coffee shop in town. And it's the nicest little coffee shop oh, you can lovely. find. It's proper chilled out. You oh. could go there and work with your laptop, couldn't you? Yeah, and they do Yorkshire tea. <laughs> and not only that, but it's... Um, it's all served by a smile by Mr Chris Nibbles. It's in lovely surroundings. Yes. And it's between um, a lovely sort of art gallery. Yeah, it's in one of the art galleries. There's this crescent in Scarborough, which is dead posh. It's like the sort of place that Oliver Twist wakes up in and sings yeah. Who Will Buy. And uh, I was going to sing that there today. But there were lots of there were um, some lads in the, the crescent. No, uh, and there's two art galleries. And one of them is the main art gallery. The other is called Wood End, which is a creative space. And that's where you'll find Chris Nibbles. And there's a little video. I put a video out on our page today of how to find it. Right, let's have a look. Who is here? Um, there's lots of you in. But let's see who's here. I'm going to run through you quite quickly. So, Nibbles and Bubbles are here. Um, first through the door of the pub. Uh, Bloody Lee Ludlow is Cahoon here. Cahoon and Bloody Ludlow. Um, Ludlow has been up since 4am, um, but oh. he's here. And he's coming here. Uh, Lee and Stuart are, are making the journey over yep. the sea October. Um, to our sellout bingo event. Sold out! Sold out! Mystic Meg, I can do without. I like watching her. I think if she says someone wearing a yellow jumper, I think, oh, we should have a yellow jumper on. That's how it goes, you know. <laughs> well, the thing she says, it's going to be a bus driver going to win it. Somebody Capricorn, she always... It's stupid half the time, none of them win. I think her predictions do more often than not come true. I think I can do what she's doing. Come out of a steam or whatever it is they have. Her predictions do come true. So if you can't come into our bingo, you can look forward to some of those lovely ladies you know, who would, might be in attendance. I wouldn't pick a fight with any of those. Um, who else have we got in here? Pauline Grant is here. Um, Pauline has had to take to bed because she's not feeling well, so she's going to catch up tomorrow. Aww. So Pauline's not here. But lots of love to Pauline who's going to watch tomorrow. Get back soon, love. Um, the Duchess is here. Trust the Duchess. Uh, we don't know who the Duchess is, but I like that mystique about the Duchess. Um, Joshua Spencer is here. Now, Aww, Joshua... We're sending lots of love to Joshua. Um, Joshua had to hear, um, has lost his cat this Felix. weekend. So Felix has had uh, complaints and has had to be put to sleep and gone over the Rainbow oh, Bridge. So lots of love to Joshua. So we can only imagine how you're feeling. Um, here's a little shot of Peggy. Oh, she's not there. She's there somewhere. Should I do the little thing? Yeah, look oh. at all my shoes. Oh, dear. What a mess. Where is she? There <laughs> she is. <laughs> Licking a little tuppence. The camera's dead high up because oh. I've been teaching. <laughs> So um, lots of love to you, Joshua. Huge love, Joshua. Um, lots of love to you and lots of love to yours. And um, we're thinking of you and your lovely lovely cat who's over the bridge. Uh, Andrea Gall is here. Um, Andrea, welcome. Lovely Mr Darcy Mr. is Darcy's crush here. boom banging into the room. With his little spanner. We're also, I think, meeting Mr Darcy, aren't we? In, I think in Mr Darcy's October. booked. Yep, yeah, hopefully he'll be coming. Uh, Coral Daft is here. Um, she is she, rugby she, free. She's coming. She's oh, coming. She's yes. booked in to Scarbados. Yes. Um, Eamon Clabby from over in the Wirral is here. Bloody Woolly Bach. Um, hey, Eamon Clabby. Joel Hazeldean is here. Oh, and lots of love to Joel at the moment. Yeah, now we're also sending a lot of love to Joel. Um, Joel let us know today that he lost his dad, um, about two weeks ago. Um, I don't, I don't know what that's like. You know what that's I like. Do, you lost I your do. mum. Yeah, yeah. So lots of love to you, Joel. Thinking of you, sending lots of love. Yeah, and I can I'm only sure imagine. All the folks in the Wigan seem like will send their love to you too. Yeah, so huge love to um, Joel Hazeldean, 
uh, a Wigan slingback, uh, stalwart, who has lost his dad and huge love to Josh Spencer. Yeah. Um, and anyone else who needs a bit of love, that's it's what we're here. here for. That's what In this abundance. is here for. We're here to cheer you up. We've not been here for a month, so <laughs> we're full of love. Um, who else is here? Helen is here. Helen is also coming to the bingo. And as a Bobby bonus, Helen is... School dinner lady. A school dinner lady. Part time, I think. Um, as well as being a well-known Hull DJ. So, yeah, DJ at the weekend, dinner lady um, in the week. We're going to be talking about... And Neighbours fan. And Neighbours fan, and she's interviewed Carl, oh, Carl sh- Kennedy. Helen, you must be happy at the moment with Neighbours coming back. Did you ever have a crush on Carl Kennedy? No. Oh, I did. <laughs> no, I... Was it the first... Not even when he first came in? No. Nope. No. He was he was he was a fox when he first was came in. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, Linda LeHughes is in. That's my lovely cousin Lucy, who is a teacher, so she'll be able to join in with our um, school chit chat a bit rants. later. Oh, rants. Then through the doors is Dale Ibbotson, um, who is doing panto this year, not far from Whitby, so if BG Bear's in, you'll be able to go and see Dale, and he's playing an ugly sister. But I bet he'll be very pretty. His promo shots have just come out. Have you not seen the promo shots yet? No, not yet. Oh, Dale doesn't look pretty. (laughs) But he's not meant to. Uh, Who else is in? Um, MP's here. Um, MP has got Cobby D. Oh, no. Post Panny D. Um, Lots of love to you, MP. Um, Lily Law is here. Will Venus is here. Now, Will, Will Venus is doing a lot of ASMR yes. at the moment. So check him out. I mean, not only does he have a lovely voice anyway, but he's been doing lots of ASMR. So, if you like a bit of that, tune in. Uh, no, so, turn your tellies down again. Um, so, Will's here. Um, Hugh Bonnet is in. The lovely Hugh Bonnet. Uh, Wes Davis is here. Seven Network is here. My dad is in. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, Gareth is here. I think I mentioned Gareth. Gareth in Porto. Hola. Um, lots of people saying they could hear the music. Um, then I asked, what was your favourite school dinner? So, some of those have come in. Mince and fried bread. You know what? Says Mr. Mistress Darcy. That rings a bell. We, it was called savoury mince at our school. <laughs> savoury mince with a, with a triangle of fried bread on top. Oh, that brought me. I, I, um, Jason suddenly made, made me remember that. And also a Manchester foot tart. Is that cornflakes? I think so, and jam. I still like one of them now. Uh, Emotional Urban Homestead is in. Uh, hello to Caroline. Uh, the Duchess, mince pie and Manchester tart. Um... Will Venus, um, solid cake. Oh, no, school cake with solid custard. Stuart Coon, Spam Fritters. Gareth, Findus Crispy Pancakes. Ooh. Linda Lee Hughes, a chocolate slab with green custard. Chocolate concrete. Uh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> oh, I think that's what she means. MP, uh, roast dinner, which they had on a Friday with Ooh. treacle sponge. Ooh. Ooh. Did they have to eat? Uh, Mr. Venus is in as well and says, Hi, Adals. Hi, Hi Adals. Um, Steve31 didn't stay for school dinners. He said he didn't stay for school dinners. It was one of the canteen staff had no fingers, only two thumbs, and it freaked him out. <laughs> Tracy30 is here. Hello, Tracy. Um, Joel Hazeldean. Um, chicken drummers. Joel's, Joel's only a oh. wee Chicken drummers, sausage, loose sweet corn. With loose chips. sweet corn. <laughs> That's why I love him. He says things like loose sweet corn. Oh, if I was Jamie Oliver, I'd be round Joel Hazeldean's right now and oh, I sorting love him out. Loose sweet corn, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Joel, sweet corn. we adore you. We love you, Joel. Um, Gareth says, Gareth from Porto. Or Gareth will always be known as Gareth from Porto. Says, dinner ladies and gay boys has, has, have a special bond. <laughs> he says, dinner ladies always kept an eye on the gay boys at school. More about that later. Um... Who else have we got in? Uh, Darren Small, missed you so much, he says. Oh, um, Emotional you. Urban Homestead's favourite school dinner was the Christmas one. Because you got parsnips and applesauce pudding with cream and cornflakes. Do you think she went to a posh school? I'm not sure. I went to a posh school and I don't remember. We never, Maybe, we never had parsnips. I think Urban Emotional Homestead, 
who is homeschooling her child needs to pop a bit of grammar in that sentence. Well, there should be a comma in there. I think it should be parsnips and the apple sauce, comma, pudding with cream and cornflakes. <laughs> Make it my friend. <laughs> um, Caroline says, we can hear it. Um, who else is here? Ellen Meadows is here. Uh, anyone else that I've missed out? Um, oh, 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 lots of... I'm seeing lots of pink custard. Hang on, there lots of pink custard. Lots of love going to Joel and to... Um, Josh, so lots of love to you guys. I hope you've seen all that because I'm missing it all out. Um, yeah, lots of love to you boys. Archie Diggins is watching Still Game tonight, so he's going to catch us another time. Oh, oh please, your bloody oh, self. Pop Still Game on iPlayer, love. We're live. Um, <laughs> David Charles is here. Hey, up from Teddington. Live from Teddington. That sounds like it should be a Saturday morning yep, program, doesn't it? Teddington. Um, Helen, a.k.a. School in the Lady, says she hopes people are dressing up for bingo. She's got a costume sorted. Well, we are. We're getting dressed dressing up. up. I think people are, because we we're we having are. a fancy dress no, competition. Um, I've heard lots of people say that. Oh, now, Bubbles, a.k.a. Shari, says, don't talk to me about school dinners. I slipped on a grape today. <gasps> Freaking me dangerous. One of my delightful children had dropped it out of their packed lunch. <laughs> Shari did impressive splits. A.K.A. Angela Rippon. <laughs> Do you remember the um, Esther Anson advert on the trains? A little fruit can be dangerous. Yeah, somebody slipped on a grape on her little thing. <laughs> and they they sued. <laughs> um, Gary, Sue that child. Gary the BBC fan is in today. That's a new name for us. Welcome, Gary the BBC fan. Um, let's see, anyone else? I hope the B- BBC is for the, ch- for the channel. Gorgeous BG Bear is in as well. Um, Cariad Eager Hobden is in. New name for us, Cariad. Um, Cariad Eager Hobden remembers Pink's. pink custard. Well, somebody told me that pink custard is actually just pink blancmange mix before it's set. Is it not just custard with a bit of red food colouring? I don't know. Oh, sorry, I can't. Um, knows. Gary's fav- Gary, the BBC fan's favourite school dinner is a corn hot dog. He must be a baby. He must be a bairn. Unless he's a teacher now. I don't remember, maybe. I don't remember anything. Well, corn at my school. I don't remember anything plant-based from my dinner lady. If you went to and you had cabbage. Um, David Charles, I sadly only ever had a school dinner when my mum was either a mother's union day out or a young wife's excursion. Mm. Um, lots of us went home for dinners. I did. Well, more on that later. Right, let's... Oh, here we go. Emotional Urban Homestead's filling us in because of my grandma woes. She says, it was a layer of apples. Oh, so it was a, a whole pudding. Yeah, you see you. A, a la- I think a, I'm Judge Judy. A layer of apples, a layer of sweetened cream, and Frosties upon the top. Um, she says she did go to a new age primary school where the cook made everything from scratch, even yeah, the crisps. I bet it foraged, yeah. <laughs> foraged, create foraged Frosties. Will Vi... Um, tells us that they were watching Law and Order the other night. Law and Order UK binge watching. Who should pop up but this one? <laughs> There's another threatens in the bank. That'll be three P coming to me next year. Will um, Cariad says we can just call Cariad e- Eager Hobden can only be called could just be called Cariad. We might call you by the full name because we like that sort of primary school vibe where you remember everyone by their double barrels. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. People always say, well, if it wasn't for that. You know. Cariad Ever Egger Hobden. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's have a look over this side. Um Bethan has filled us in that Cariad is the Welsh for love as oh. well. Um let's have a look over your side. There are lots of messages over here, love. I know. First through the door is lovely Mark Monday and Pearson, who I hope is a lot better to his little eye. Do you know what? He's not first through the door. This is the thing, it cuts off some comments. Oh, is it? So anyone who commented before that about listening to the music. You missed them. Why is it cutting people out then? It just cuts them off. Look, it's anyway. Keep oh. going. Anyway, Mark was Mark popped in early, earlier. Followed by lovely Jason, who um, is coming to see us too. Do you know who I think was first through the doors? Who? Old loose sweet corn himself, Joel. I think Joel was first through the doors, but his message has d- disappeared. Uh, followed by lovely Jay Shaw, uh, Philippe Jacques of Fortinbras. Oh, she's now he said. He said fish fingering chips. She's been globe trotting, hasn't she? He said he even tried to eat it when he bit his tongue off. Oh, 
Oh, and the ketchup stung. Oh, you did that last week, didn't you? Yeah, but I'd never have ketchup with a fish finger. What? Tartar sauce. What are you on about? <laughs> ketchup. Um, you wouldn't even call it ketchup at school, I bet. Tomato sauce. Or oh, red, red, red sauce. sauce. <laughs> I got blood on it. Um, I, I'd just ask for a small tomato puree if I wanted. Followed to. by our, our lovely chap Chris Perinda popped in. Our Perinda. new, our new barrister. <laughs> yep. Yes. I shall not talk to you until my barrister is present. Um, lovely Bethan Williams. Yucky so Clear. Bethan, of course, is tuning in from New South Wales in Australia. She popped a little note through earlier saying, "Are you on tonight?" Oh, bless her. Um, uh, uh, Laura Louise. Laura Louise. Laura Louise. Um, Laura Louise sound, Laura Louise sounds like um, she's a superhero before she becomes a superhero. Oh, a bit like um, like Lois Margot Lane Kidder. or no, like um, Peter Parker, that kind of thing. Uh, Mr. Ian Trushy Rushworth from Kingston upon Hull is popped in. Where is he from? Kingston upon Hull. <laughs> uh oh. Lovely Marty Garton Spence from Aberdeen. Oh, he's loving my shirt. Um, oh, Mark popped in. Mark Hall said good evening. His whiff is a bit bad, and he's holding on to a wire hanger out the window. We used to use um, <coughs> a wire hanger on your old portable telly, didn't we, to watch oh, Channel Five Prisoner? So my hair fell out. Going back in 1998, most probably. Linda Afflex is loud and clear. Uh, Leanne McGee. And she's coming from Eli Cambridge. Uh, David Charles, is he coming from is he in another room? Superhero Laura Louis has um, paused a program about badgers to watch us. <laughs> I think we're a little bit more entertaining than badgers, aren't we? Unless they're honey badgers. The lovely bad badgers are lovely though. Yes, David Charles has popped through. He's gone by tonight. Yeah. Jason Rigby is also by tonight, and will be trying Mr. Nibbles's cafe out. Um, might not be open well, on a, might open, not be open it? on a weekend, lovely. Um, Lots of love for Joel. Did you mention Chloe Bates? And um, <laughs> Chloe Bates has got a picture of a very camp fan, which we're enjoying. And then lovely, uh, I say, oh Chloe Bates, Jamie Ravel, Jamie Ravel. Jamie Ravel is watching us from inside a bus today. Oh. Um, Jamie Ravel and his, um, his trainee drivers are watching us. Yeah, yeah. Now, am I right to think Jamie Ravel is, is in on Australia? New, is in New Zealand, yeah, maybe? New Zealand, or yeah, New Zealand, I think. Chloe Bates doesn't like our ASMR. <laughs> uh, she said she loves chocolate, chocolate sponge with chocolate, chocolate sauce. sauce. Lovely Lionel- Jason Brett. Oh, lovely Mr. Brett is in, along with his gorgeous husband. And they're saying, long time no see, I know, it's been four weeks. Uh, uh, Laura Louise says uh, her favourite is jam sponge with desiccated coconut on top. Um, Ian Tushy Rushworth, who is from my neck of the woods, well, I'm, we're from Hull, and we must be had the same recipe of concrete um, pudding. This is called concrete slag. No, but he corrects it in the next line. Oh, slab. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit of a... Can you imagine saying... Um, concrete um, slag. Um, a piece of concrete slag, you slag. And pink pud- pink custard. Um, Sarah Simpson. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Simpson. Sausage chips and for pudding cookies. Oh, she's a young one as oh, well. Cookie. Cookie, yeah. It's we, a young one. We yeah. didn't even call them cookies when now, I was Now, I don't school. know about you, but my school dinner came on a like, pot plate and a pot bowl. Did yours? Well, we're talking school dinners later. But um, I know that long of you young uns had it on a on like a prison plate. Um, you, you wouldn't have called it a cookie in back in the day, would you? Just biscuit. just a big a big biscuit. Um, Leah, a big undercooked biscuit. <laughs> Look at Leanne McGee. I love the pizzas and bacon rolls. What school? I don't know so, now. School for cabbies. Leanne McGee. <laughs> Bacon roll. Bacon roll, please, love. Leah McGee's from down... No, come on, come on, come on, no she's from Down Under, but... Oh, is she? She might be from here, and then has emigrated Down Under. But she's in... I think she's in the UK right now. Chris Perenda, who's as thin as a cotton bud, <laughs> said he had sausage and chips every day. And look at his favourite dessert. Chocolate biscuit block with custard. 
his chocolate slag. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe Bates. Uh, Chloe Bates also says... Oh, no, lots of things. Uh, chocolate sponge, chocolate custard. Yeah. Jane Wagner is fashionably late, but is here. Hello. Yeah. Gemma Alexander is here and says treacle pudding and custard. Oh, that sounds nice, yeah. Uh, Maryam Enver is here from sunny north Cyprus. Hi, Maryam. Cyprus, lovely. Uh, Richard Bobbins Duffer was in that cut-off section oh, okay. earlier on. Um, hated school dinners, or hates school dinners, and he's a, he's a teacher. Some didn't, I think um, Neil Sandwell, I don't, I don't think he's in tonight, said... Um, he is in, I've seen his name. Oh. He's in those cut-off ones. Um, didn't, said he, didn't have, he never had a school dinner. Similar to me, Neil. Melanie Fairley's in. Hello, Melanie. For Paul Watson's. Um, Beth and Williams, birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Um, uh, Alec Mark Hall says Alex is at a singing lesson. Oh, is she now? Oh, is she now? Is she now? What's um, Kate Robbins' song from Crossroads? I bet he's singing More that. More than in love. Do, 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 More than... I love words with him. Um, Neil Sandwell's in the cut-off gang. Says hi to everyone. Um, let's have a look. Um, it's all skipping by. Um, let's run through. Yep. New Zealand mother sops. Jamie Revel is in New Zealand and just shown all his trainee drivers mother sops. Um, Joe Jarvis is here. Um, Concrete slag. Um, Tushy Rushworth um, yeah. says it was a subliminal mistake, but probably um, subliminal. So I love it being concrete slag. Um, Leah McGee is from Essex, but emigrated to Australia 14 years ago. That explains why she has like a cabbie's, a cabbie's bacon. dinner at school. Bait and roll, darling. Yeah, darling. I love a bacon roll, Kath. And a nice fag. Um, so he said turkey twizzlers. Who's put turkey twizzlers? Joe, Dar- Joe Jarvis. Must be you, young un. Pizza or turkey twizzlers with smiley faces. Chips with garlic sauce. Oh, you you were spoiled. Oh, you young'uns. Did none of you have cabbage? Jane Wagner. Chocolate cake with mint green custard. That's chocolate slag, isn't it? Slag. Um, Chris Perinda. My friend Stephen would buy potato scallops and eat them. keep them in his pockets to eat later. What potato scallops? <laughs> Actually, I said it without thinking. A potato scallop, I would say, is like, like a, a um, potato fried, like a slightly larger tater tot, like a circle of mashed potato that's oh. got a bit of a crispy crumb. Oh, I think he means sliced potato, and that's fried. Well, we'll find it's out. Like a scallop, like a disc. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Uh, <laughs> Melanie Furley, at my school they had some horrible homemade crisps like snaps. They were vile. We always threw them away after a couple. And under the mobile classroom there was a mountain of the horrible things still in their you bags. You can't, I, no matter how clever you are, you can't make homemade crisps or snacks. I've tried it. I just want to try this recipe where you, you sort of put really thin sliced potatoes in a microwave on kitchen paper for like four hours. And you get like eight crisps after all that. Didn't work. Nah. Uh, Leanne McGee says her dad was a black cabbie till a few years ago. See, bacon, bacon roll and a block of slag. And Laura Louis is an Essex girl as well and says there was definitely some concrete slags in her school. Uh, Mark my damn pace and he must have gone to Portugal. school. Look, partial to cheese and rice croquettes. Oh, think I'm describing a croquette, aren't I? Yeah, you're like a little... A potato breaded. croquette. Yeah. Here he is. Here, here's Perinda. Sliced potato, deep fried. And he put them in his pocket. Now. We're missing out. Oh, on this side, we're missing lots of. Um, uh, Philippe says uh, they call potato scallops smacks in Wigan. They would. Uh, <laughs> anything over here? Let's have a look. Cl- Jason Darcy says concrete slag, but we call him dad. <laughs> uh, um, BG Bear says, when did they stop serving liver and mash at school? With you see that? You had a bit of leather with a little tube sticking out. And uh, the mash was a little bit. Um, turkey. Tw- uh, David Junior Jones didn't mind school dinners, but it was all about turkey twizzlers. See These the, young guns. Yeah, turkey twizzlers. Um, lots it, of people knew what a potato um, fritter was. Potato. What did Chris call um, it? Uh, scallop. Potato scallop. 
Helen says Alan knows his potato scallops. She knew you'd be right because she's from all. She says yeah. her mum used to make them. Yeah. Um, Jason Darcy, we had spam fritters at school, vile and liver. I think we had spam fritters. Well, I had them in this older school, higher school. Jason, were they in a, a gingerbreaded crumb? Well, no, ours were battered. I remember, I remember you just pressed it on it. You pressed it and your plate just flooded with oil. Oh, Caroline's still on about a crazy dinner. She says she used to eat everyone's roast parsnips. <laughs> nobody wanted them. Um, David Junior Jones says we need to bring back Turkey Twizzlers. What does Jamie Oliver know? Yeah, he really put the boot in, didn't he? When he went in and, and tried to ban them. Cinders McDuffie is in. Says it's been a while. It has indeed, Cinders McDuffie. We are glad you're here. And how is... is now is your daughter called Flora or Florence? Let us know. Your daughter who used to go to bed around this time. Um, who's most probably up now. She's most probably a teenager. It's been so long we've been doing this. Right. Melanie Fairley has reminded me of something from school dinners. The battered old steel jugs full of tap water. Mm. And you had to... Di- someone from the table, probably a junior four, junior three, would have to go and fill it. Yeah, but it never tasted... It tasted wrong, didn't it? Well, it tasted of the metal inside, didn't it? And then we had these plastic beakers that stacked. Do you have those? I think we had glass. Oh, here we go. China and glass. I think we had glasses. Prim, Ava Primrose, I've remembered. Um, that's Cinder's McDuff. Look, there we go. And it's come through the name. I think we had glass. Like that sort of toughened glass. I don't think we had plastic beakers. We did. And the jugs weren't flat, so they had a sort of bevel to them. So you could spin it round. I remember the big metal jugs and I remember the, the act of having to go and fill them from a tap that was a bit, from a sink that was yes. like a trough. And it came up, with, they usually have a pipe that came out <laughs> and then a sort of old fashioned tap. And did it have like, it had a sort of grid over half of the big sink. Oh yeah, and it smelled, it smelled like <laughs> Do you remember the big bins, the big slot bins? Pig that bins. would go to the pigs. Yeah, well, apparently. <laughs> apparently went to the pigs. Oh, there's a little fly there. Um... Right, what have we got to talk about? Well, what have we been up to? Well, you've been around the world, haven't you? I've been around the world. Aye, 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 aye. Aye. Couldn't find my baby, because he was here. Um, what have we been up to? Well, I went to America. I went to I went to Houston for a week and unlocked some potential. <laughs> well, the last, I've, I think before, the last time we saw you, um, weren't, we do, weren't we doing a, a quiz? No, it was my... Uh, oh, we did the quiz. We had my birthday quiz. Brandy's birthday, which was yeah. amazing. And we met the lovely Pip. We met the gorgeous Pip, who's not in, I don't think. I don't think he's in. Um, Pip came, even though it was on a Friday, which is, of course, a holy day for Pip. He came along. Yeah. And uh, he bought his little um, menorah and had fun and with he, us. And he wore a lovely pearl necklace. Yeah, he did. He had a lovely pearl necklace on. He looked gorgeous. And his partner. His beautiful partner. Uh, Brandy's birthday at the end of the night Sherry Stump surprised Brandy with um, champagne for everyone champagne you know what I mean fizzy fizzy wine and um, fairy cakes which had all been personalised cupcakes fairy cakes the the same thing isn't it Uh fairy cakes the same as a cupcake cupcakes bigger and more flamboyant (laughs) fairy cakes are a little bit meh a cupcake, but they'd all been personalised with cho- chocolate male members that you'd made, hadn't you, at home? So anyway, everyone had birthday cakes. There were candles. There were, everyone sung happy birthday. Flowers. Everyone made me um, birthday cards in the interval. It was like a naughty round to make me a rude birthday card. So I had a wicked birthday week, didn't yeah, I? Remember, yeah, And then the weekend, I had to pop off to Houston. Yeah. Then I flew from Houston to Argentina and spent a week in Argentina, which was great. Then you were in Aberdeen as well, weren't you? I was in Aberdeen a little bit in, in the middle of all that. And Norway. Oh, yeah, I've been all... <laughs> yeah, place. so you've got all that. Jeepers. Jeepers, creepers. Yeah, so it's been busy. I'm knackered, really, aren't I? You and are I've been today. dead busy this week. Bless him, he got home on... Was it Thursday or Friday? Uh, Saturday, I think. Thursday, Saturday? Oh, Saturday. And then you had to do a quick... Um, Meeting, didn't you, online? As soon as you got through the bloody door? Oh, it's just... Yeah, lots of delayed planes. No, I got home on Friday, didn't I? I got home on Friday, lots of planes were delayed. Every plane I got was delayed. 
Um, got home on Friday, had to go straight into a meeting, weekend off, and then I've been working every day, haven't I, yeah, this week? Yeah, you work tomorrow, aren't you? Working afternoon. tomorrow. And then I've got a week off, and then I go to America for another week. But, um, yeah, next week I'm here. But we're getting busy, we're getting all prepared for our Halloween House of Games. Yeah, which is completely sold out, which is amazing. Um, so we chuffed about that. Yeah. And it's a whole different kettle of, kettle of fish compared to our other shows, isn't it? It is. Different characters. Yeah. It is. And our lovely boys are away at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, in Thailand. So Stephen and Martin are in Thailand at the moment. So we um, we had a little chat, didn't we, to, with them tonight over yeah. the Tinter Web and saw their lovely um, place they're staying in. Yeah. And they're off to Phuket. Pu- they're in, near Phuket at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. And then they're going to... To Phuket Town or something. Phuket Town and then they're going to Bangkok for a week, aren't they? Mm. So yeah, all good. The lovely Peggy Cinders McDuffie is asking about her. She's got a, a gippy hip again, hasn't she? Yeah, she's hurt her leg again, so she's a bit limpy. If she she bounces about from like on the sofas, and we have got some dog steps, but she sometimes refuses to use them or forgets them. And I think when I came home, she got so giddy, she jumped straight off the sofa, and she damaged her back leg. So she's been limping, hasn't she? Yeah, but she, then she starts walking okay. Yeah. And then she'll have a little rest, and then when she starts walking up again, she starts going, oh, my bloody hip, oh, my bloody hip. Yeah. So but she's, she's, bit, th- she's 13. She is. So she's, she's got, limpy. you know, little old joints. But yeah, so we've, we've got the bingo coming up. We might do a video this weekend. I don't yeah. know. See? See what, how you feeling? I've got some ideas, haven't I? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is us. Um, I've just noticed that um, Motion Urban Homestead says the milk was always warm. I think this was about school milk. Those little milk bottles that you got. Now, all you young ones won't remember this, but in first, like, playtime at school, there was a milk monitor, like a pop, like one of the one of the preferred kids at school, and they'd go and get, like, a crate of milk, wouldn't they? And yeah. it would come in, and they were in little bottles. Yeah, with little Do you remember? foil lids. And you used to get a little bottle of milk. And a straw. And a straw, and you'd have milk. Free milk. Mid-morning, wasn't it? Yeah. It was taken away by Mrs Thatcher. Mrs. Um, Thatcher, the milk snatcher. And in winter it was lovely because it was all cool and cold. But in the summer, as um, Emotional Urban Homestead says, it's. Uh, I don't remember. I don't can really. Be a little bit on the warmer side. I don't remember like the taste of it and stuff. Oh, it was lovely. But I had. You know, one had. One had a dairy farm at home, so I don't have, I have milk fresh from the teat. <laughs> fresh from the udder. When uh, me and I've told you this before, but when me and Linda LaHughes were teenage, we, um, we we looked after a farm one summer. Mm. I don't even really understand how we ended up on this farm looking after it, but we we had to go and milk the goats every day. Really? Yeah, and um, the goats had a disease. Oh, good <laughs> so time. you weren't allowed to drink their milk, but you had to milk them anyway. Because they needed to be. Because otherwise, they'd get like. I don't know what would happen, but yeah. So I've milked goats. Oh, my nana, bless her, my late grandma. She um, when she left school, she sort of had to do little jobs in the you know in the area to earn money. And one was to sort of look after an old woman, and so she'd go in in the morning and help her and wash up and everything. And then one of her jobs was to milk a goat. Oh really? I wondered yeah. where this was going from my goat milking story. Uh, and my my nan had never seen a goat in her life, and so this sort of goat. Took quite to her, took, sort of took to her, and then one day, goats become really cl- attached to people. That's it. The goat escaped and followed my nana all the way home. Which nana was it? Nana Gibbons. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, did it live with them then? Yeah, she had to take, take it back. back. Oh, Went back in this little hutch where it, where wherever it lived. It was in a, it was in a, it was in a town. It's sort of in the town in the city in the garden. Mark Mondeum and Mark Mondeum and Pearson was the milk monitor. That doesn't surprise me, does you? No. Uh, Neil Sandwell had the milk bottles when he was first teaching. You can't I think so. There said there were a milk, milk monitor, was it? The, the milk Simon was, B. The milk was taken away in the 80s, wasn't it? Uh, he says that uh, when he was teaching, children used to have it at the same time as the donkeys walked past a Blackpool beach. They never got bored of the donkeys or the warm milk. I don't know, unless it came back. Leanne McGee was also milk monitor. Oh, lots of milk monitors. Dan Phillips said they kept the, the milk next to the radiator in school. That's a bit cruel, isn't it? And um, Helen says in the winter in her school, it, it used to freeze and stick out the neck of the bottle. Like a mushroom. Um, right, enough, enough milk chit-chat. We're going to play some adverts and we will be back after the ad break um, with... 
our school memories. Some more. So memories like the turvy of me. Look out for Alan in this advert. Or I'm look, not, at, I've not seen these, so that's no. a surprise for me as well. There's a little advert that I think Alan should do as an isolation creation. See you on the other side. A lot of people ask me what it's like to be in television. <laughs> they even ask me who my designers are. <laughs> and a lot of people ask me how I get my hair so shiny. Well, it's easy. I use silk hints. Because silk hints adjusts to my hair's needs, giving it a fresh, just washed feeling all day. Self-adjusting silkiance perfects the science of silkening your hair. Actually, you'd be surprised the things people ask me. <laughs> you'd like a cup of tea? Come out the cup with me. Cos Lipton is the finest quality. We say the way is Lipton's any time of the day, yes! The jiggler hits the spot, the jiggler's got the luck. We take the smallest beats from the finest rock. For you and me, and me now, Lipton's is the finest tea. 7.30 Friday, Ali's received some surprising mail. Ooh, this one got in by mistake. It's addressed to Charles. And it's labelled private and personal. Smell. Are they putting perfume on the back of stamps these days? But curiosity killed the cat. Ali, if you're going to open it, open it. Leave me out of it. But if I do open it, you'll think I'm a snoop. No, a felon. Kate and Ali, 7.30 Friday on GTS BKN. Have you ever wanted to learn how to paint? You may have thought it was a dream, but I can make it happen, even though you may never have painted before. With my exclusive four-step method, I've taught thousands of people in the United States of America and around the world as well. Famous people like President Carter, Sammy Davis, Roger Moore, they all learned this way. And so can you. Quickly, easily, and in the privacy of your own home. Just send now for your special paint-a-picture kit. Everything's here. Brushes, colors, painting palette, dabber, thinner, and a self-framing board. Plus, most important of all, this easy-to-follow video, which takes you step-by-step step so that you can complete a beautiful oil painting, incredible but true, from blank canvas to finished framed painting in around an hour, even if you've never painted before. Fantastic. Normally, you'd pay at least $40 for all these artist materials, plus around $30 for the video, and it would be well worth the $70. But, as a special introductory offer, it's all yours for just $39.90, plus $5 delivery if you ring this number now. Imagine the thrill of creating a beautiful painting like this, and you can learn in your own home. In fact, I guarantee to refund your purchase price in full if you're not completely delighted with your very first painting. Remember, just $39.90 plus delivery gives you absolutely everything you need to create your own superb painting, guaranteed, or your money back. Our operators are waiting for your call right now. This special price of only $39.90 plus $5 delivery is yours only while stocks last. Credit cards welcome. Just have your card number ready when you ring and phone this number right now. The girls have found a new friend. Oh, he likes me. He must be a male. Uh, but Rose may pay the price. If he lifts his leg in this house, I'm rubbing your nose in it. The Golden Girls. I don't know how she gets away with it. If she was my age, she'd be locked up at Shady Pines making boats out of popsicle sticks. It's steady Wednesday night. What was that? Rose brought a dog home from the supermarket. But couldn't she just get stew meat like she usually does? Here on GTS BKN. Honey, you know Bob Ross. Welcome back. And now I've just seen some capital letters in our oh, um, chat box. The capitals are in the house. So Paul McFarlane's here. He says, Bonnie, Connie, it's, it's got to be gorgeous, Alan. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Connie, what do you think? What, a pile of crap? <laughs> what, the picture or the, yeah. the stuff you get? You get you can get more from a pound shop. And remember, that's years ago, so $39 were loads back then. Yeah, just because she's on a video. <laughs> oh, Connie. Connie, you're lying through your back teeth, love. Right, so it's time for... Five, four, three, two, one. 
So it's not exactly our uh, top five, but it's five questions about school time. School. School. Work and school. So, first question. What is your, or was your, favourite school subject? Well, I'm, I'm, all these questions, I'm now referring back to my junior school. Oh, are you? Yeah, because I think it's more of a, more of a retro um, bunch of answers rather than the sixth form. Because sixth form is where I, you know, I sort of became myself, but um, I, that's not really school, is oh, it? Oh, no, you can't do sixth form. No. Ian Tushy Rushworth's drama. I wonder, did you and two go to the same school? Did you go to Greatfield High School, Ian? Um, um, because I did, I did my my junior school didn't do drama, and I but I love drama, but my junior school's where I did the little alien play. Let me just get something straight here. Junior school didn't have subjects. We did. You didn't have subjects, did you? Yeah. You just had like one teacher for everything. No. Did you go like to different teachers? Yes. Yeah. So you went and did we like did science. Yeah. We did art. We did PE. All with different teachers. The French teacher didn't do PE. What are you on about? In junior school, you did French. In junior school, we did French with Mrs. Hargreaves. <laughs> we, I had. What are we talking about here? In junior school. So from the ages of eight to 11. Alan went to that thing where you have a, like a middle school. I went as well, to Mersey, you? Mersey Street School. Then we moved. Then I went to Shakespeare Junior High. And then Greatfield High. Do you have the three? Different separate schools? No, but I went to a junior school and then I went to high school, but I was in lower school first and then upper school No, in high school. Um, I don't know, you might have. So favourite subject when I was little at primary school for me. Big telly wheeled in. Is that, is that a lesson? <laughs> yeah, because I'm saying there was no subject. <laughs> So part, like, this was like a class. A big telly would be wheeled in. You'd most probably be in the assembly hall. A big telly would get wheeled into assembly hall. In you'd come. Mm. There would be a countdown. Do you remember there'd be a little yeah. countdown? Ding, 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 ding. Before the programme started. Mm. And I remember sitting, and we'd pretend we had a little gun, and you'd try and shoot. So the things would disappear. You'd shoot them. Yeah. And then you'd watch something, maybe Words and Pictures with Wordy, mm. um, maybe You and Me with Pongo and Dibs, yeah. or maybe um, The Boy from Space. <laughs> Primary school. Primary school. So my favourite thing was when the big telly got wheeled okay. in. Okay. Primary school. But we didn't do subjects. Not at primary. I didn't do subjects at primary school. With junior school. At junior school. school we did. No. Wow, I found that really bizarre. We had like... So at junior... So... Uh, We'll get into this later. Keep you, you subjects. Uh, yeah, art. I well, it started with art really at my junior school with a uh, Miss Wade. Ooh, hello, name. Miss Wade. And she, she was um, a miss. She she looked like Karen Travers from Suffolk H. <laughs> so she was like so, you know that sort of like look. That like early twenties. Yeah, and she was lovely. A long skirt. Yeah, and I think she did sort of sewing because there was another art teacher called Mister Rana, and he did all the art, and he was like really popular. But sometimes you didn't go to him to do art. You went to Miss Wade and she'd do art with world. you. We had one classroom. And that was it? You were in one classroom, the whole thing. Really? You'd do like bits and pieces. So like a junior did, school? Yeah, so we did a bit of computers because there was one computer in school. God, your teacher must be really, really tired. And in our desks, you know you have desks that go like that? Yeah. So you have a, de- a desk and you put your bits in there. Yeah. And it has a little inkwell in yeah, it. Yeah. You'd lift that up, and inside there we had um, a little QWERTY keyboard that we'd made um, that you could do, um, like Mavis Beacon teaches typing on. It was just cardboard, right. but we'd practice typing on this little QWERTY keyboard. <laughs> so did you not move around the school to different no classes? Same classroom. Wow. I remember one thing I really liked was um, the teacher put a big mural on a wall, and it was a snow scene. And it was um, the cold planet in Empire Strikes Back. And we had to make little Star Wars pictures to Ooh, put on like it like that. a mural. I bet you liked that, didn't you? I did like that. But the other side of the classroom, there was like a Barbie scene going on. I wanted to be over that side, popping some Barbies in. But we were segregated by sex. 
Um, so yeah, that's my favourite subject. And then obviously art into drama when I went to the high school where we could do drama. I loved drama. But I wanted to do art and drama, but you couldn't because art and drama were in the same block. So, so you, you, couldn't have, you couldn't do both. And I think music and PE was in the same block. Not that I wanted to do bloody PE. We had to do PE. Oh no, we couldn't. We didn't have to do it at high school. I loved it. We had to do it like throughout. You had to do PE and games. And well, they were from, from the same teacher? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, in... Primary school, same teacher. So it would just be rounders. Oh, PE. Out and play rounders. PE, primary school was lovely. It was just, we had, we had a woman from a Nana's estate coming on a piano. <laughs> Did you do a bit of dancing? Yeah, dance. da- yeah, and dance rounder. Let's have a look at some of your, uh, some of yours. Um, big telly, lots of people, big telly. With the little flaps coming out. Um, <laughs> yep. Um, Lily Law, music and movement recorded off the radio. Um, emotional Urban Homestead, Big Telly, and music with chime bars and a rain machine. Oh, a rain machine. She went to a posh school, didn't she? She did. Um, Nibbles and Bubbles used to watch How We Used to Live. I think oh, yeah. we watched yeah. that as well. Music time with the light-up musical notes. The Boy from Space, Picture Box with Alan Rothwell. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, in junior school, here we go, Simon B. In junior school, we would get a job sheet for the week which had all the subjects and work to be done. And we had some fixed lessons, such as PE and assembly. But otherwise, we could choose what to su- hey? what to do. Wow. <laughs> um, didn't have a favourite subject, carry ad. Um, JV Jones, a school memory is unlocked. Can you remember the overhead projectors with song lyrics on them? Oh, yeah, the sort of... So on like acetate, acetate sheets, and then the teacher put it on backwards. But I'm saying you can laugh at them. Uh. Simon B says our classroom was organised with zones for reading, art, maths. So the classroom was like the crystal maze. Uh. Over here, anyone? So where did we go? Let's have a look. Um, subjects. Okay, uh, Ian Tushy Rushworth did go to Great Field. Yep. Um, Neil Sandwell English Henry uh, Henry Physics uh, English for Neil and Henri um, Dr Henry Medicine Woman and Physics for Ness Oh she liked Physics did she? We didn't do any sort of science at baby school though Junior or Oh we did primary. a junior My um, form teacher was a science teacher right arsehole I, I think your junior school is my high school It might be and then when you get to like 14, do you think that's high school? Well, I did. I think my my high school was 85 to 88. Does that make sense? <laughs> Tell me about, yeah, does, that's your that's when you were doing your exams kind of And thing. then my junior school was, must be 81 to 85. I don't know. Four years there. Yeah, maybe like junior and pro, oh, I don't know. Uh, Chris Brinder, Drama, English and History. Ian Tushy Rushworth went to Stockwell Primary. Ashwell. Ashwell know, yeah, Junior School. Yeah, so it's this... Hull's weird, isn't it? It's got all these little... Beg your pardon. It's got all these little customs, like three schools. Yeah, it's better than just one... It's just in one schoolroom. Like <laughs> somebody out... Little, little house on the prairie. <laughs> Richard Bobbins Duffer went to Wheatbank, the school next door. It was Glenburn. They were called Glenbummers, and we were called the best wankers. <laughs> um, and we have, we're pudding called concrete slag. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Philip Jack Fortinbras. I missed out. So, I missed so much of my education out singing in old folk homes and hospices and delivering the Harvest Festival hampers. He only learned his eight times table in his thirties. Oh, we used to bring a um, box of um, Harvest Festival for the old people. Me and my brother. It was a shoe box with a lid on it, all decorated. Like, but you take. Would you have to take the stuff in for that? Oh and yeah. And they divide yeah. it up, and you had to go and spread it around. And old me people. and my brother would have to take a box to an old person in our street. Yeah. But all the old women in our street were really, really well off. So my mother, she being a, God bless her, rest of soul, would go through the box and re- re- replace all the good stuff with some shit. So she'd take a tin of salmon out and replace it with a tin of spaghetti hoops. <laughs> well, is it always like one for one, though? Oh, yeah. She wouldn't, like, just, wouldn't just give an empty box over. So then you'd have to go and find an old lady and give her a really shitty box of yeah. old food. Yeah. We used to have to take ours into church and go and put it on the altar. Oh, we did that at Proper school. harvest festival. We had all, but it wasn't, it wasn't churchy. But was it like a cornucopia? So oh, yeah. it was like arranged. And then there was brought in those like special breads. Yeah. Like a moulded bread. Yeah. 
that's a bit too shiny. Yeah. Um, and then we sort of sort of set. It's, it's like it's like the Wicked Man. We used to sort of sit in rows and sing at it. <laughs> did, did you have a polystyrene birthday cake when it was birthdays, and that would come out, and you'd have to uh, no, sing no. sing happy birthday to someone? No, we didn't do anything cruel like that. Um, we didn't give fake cakes to people. Uh, let's have a look. Linda Lee Hughes. We danced around a maypole. <laughs> oh, we did that one year. Shari says she also danced around a maypole. Yeah, we didn't. What did we do for dance? Did you sort of um, strip naked and do that against the wall? <laughs> I watched my that. Wicca, I watched my that Wicca Man. Away. What's the actress called? Um, uh, She's foreign, isn't Brett she? Eklund. Brit Eklund. I did do that to woo you, didn't I? You did, yeah. I just thought it was sort of a noisy neighbour. Um, I can't remember what we danced to in, in junior school. I'm sure I was sassy with my moves. Right, let's have question two. Favourite teacher? Miss Wade, the art teacher at junior school. <laughs> and then um, sixth form college, Betty, who's now a good friend of mine on Facebook. Right, so primary school, I only had three teachers. What? <laughs> it is the last on the prairie, isn't it? Right, I had Mrs Brooks. She... She saw me from age, whatever you start at, five, I thought four you or say five. she saw from me from what I was. Four or five till I was seven, I think. And then junior school, Mrs. Driffield, junior one. Hmm. Mrs. Parr, junior two. Mrs. Parr, junior three. Mrs. Driffield, junior four. Um, Mrs. Driffield, Mrs. Parr, probably both um, over the Rainbow Bridge. Both sadists. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, we had different teacher every year. Yeah? Yeah, never had the same teacher, ever. Mrs. Parr was, uh, like, evil. My mum, my mum's watching. My mum will be like, oh, Jamie, don't don't name and shame. She was awful. She used to do Some horrible teachers things. Some horrible. Um, but, yeah, so only three teachers in primary school. Mm. Mrs. Driffield wasn't, like, physically violent, but she was more mentally cruel. <laughs> And she, um, she did the YOC, which I was a member of, Young Ornithologist Club. So you'd have to go out like that? spot bird spotting. So I had to go, <laughs> right. So we had to go bird spotting, and you got a bird diary, and you had to keep a diary every year of what you'd spotted, and maybe draw a little sketch of like a kingfisher, or if you'd seen a heron in your garden, draw a little sketch of that. It is the last on the prairie. Um, my mum would be testament to this. I got it home. I maybe spotted a robin, week one. Didn't go in my YOC diary again until week 50 when you have to hand it in. And then I had to busy myself creating... These birds. Creating birds I'd seen throughout the year. So I'm sure... She's like, you've seen a dodo? <laughs> <laughs> but surely they migrate at this time of year. Um, but yeah, so Mrs. Driffield and Mrs. Parr. Not nice teachers. Secondary school teachers. My favourite was called Jean Bell. Now, Mrs. Jean Bell had long hair, um, too long for a teacher, and she wore a lot of long kind of tartan skirts and a lot of cardigans or uh, jumpers over the shoulder. And she was our drama teacher. And she was very much, hello, I'm Jean Bell. I used to be a professional actress. When you called her Jean? Hair. Yeah. Jean Bell. We'd always call her Jean Bell. And um, she was very theatrical. She liked me because I had a theatrical mm. slant. Um, so she'd pop me in like plays with older kids. Um, so I was in plays with like the six formers when I was in like third year. Um, anyway, Jean Bell. She unleashed my passion for drama. Um, so they are my favourite teachers. My, my sort of teacher I didn't really like was called Miss Wood. And she was the RE teacher. And she had, she had skin like a zombie. <laughs> you know, when that sort of white, papery skin with a, bit, with a little bit of like a, it was a bit creased. And she used to sit in the assembly and sit on a little tiny chair. And then while the sort of assembly was good, she'd fall asleep. Oh, <laughs> oh she was scary. Do you remember what you had to say at the start of assembly? Yes, Mr. Brooks. You had to say, did you not have to do this? Good morning, Mr. Wilde. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> yeah, sort of. 
And then the, the um, Jehovah's Witnesses had to get up and go out. Oh, if it was a Jesus-y one. If it was a sing, sing we hymns. Didn't, we didn't have any of ours, because ours, ours was a, Christ, a Christian school. Um, Philippe Jacques Brautenbrau was also a member of the YOC and had to go to Martin Mia, which I did as well. Um, lots of people bringing in uh, teachers. Excuse me. Emotional Urban Homestead. Miss Cooper, long dark haired with maroon velvet bows in her hair and lived at Fim Fimberfield Farm at Friday Thorpe. I think Emotional Urban Homestead also lived in my kind of little house on the prairie land. I do, and I think you did, that was a tongue twister. Fimberfield Farm at Friday Thorpe. We'd have, been, we'd have been mates, me and Emotional Urban would, Homestead, yeah. wouldn't we? Yeah. Um... Nibbles and Bubbles says all drama teachers that she knew were like Jean Bell. Uh, Mr. Gray, her teacher, knew someone who was in Corrie. <laughs> Weird. When I first started, our drama teacher was called Mr. Llewellyn. And I remember him being about eight foot tall. Mm. And he was a basketball player, I think. And he used to put on like really funky musicals. So first year was all musical theatre. Yeah. And then Jean Bell came and it was theatre. Chekhov. Chichester Festival. Um, BG Bear's teachers okay here we go infants Miss Palin Miss Browning Mrs Browning Miss Palin again then Miss Price and then the evil Mr Sony who would hit you if you couldn't answer or hadn't got up to his standard yeah there was some right there was a lot of hitting going on in our teacher yeah we had a right horrible teacher like that mm. would slip a year or something like that yeah right let's have a look question three Favourite playground game? Now, my schools didn't have, like, climbing frames or things like that. I don't know whether yours did. But my first two schools, all we had was concrete. I oh, know, we had fields. Concrete slag. Uh, we had just concrete to play on. We had fields. And then when we moved, uh, my, high, my junior school had loads of fields. Fields as far as you could see. We had, field, we had fields. We had a gypsy caravan in one field. We had climbing frame with um, like one of them ladders you swing across. Mm. Um, we had a roundabout. Boating lake. We had lots of logs you could sit on Yacht and sort club. of just chat. <laughs> Gentleman's club. There was like an all weather pitch and then fields. Yeah. And then there were certain fields you could get onto if you were older. Than I don't, my favourite, I mean, we never really, I never really did anything butch like play football or rounders. Mum was like running or chasing. Or acting, or lots of people saying British bulldog. Oh, no, I think I'm I wouldn't not, like anything rough like I that. I might, I mean, I'm not being funny, but we might, we might be doing like Cagney Lacey. I, I'd be playing those sort of games, that sort of thing. Dempsey Make Peace, Charlie's Angels, yeah, or the professionals, yeah. Um, reliving, re, re, reliving that, really. My, uh, my mum's my asking me, do I remember what Ewan called Jean Bell? I would imagine it's Jean Bell and uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure. Is he not in Italia? I don't think he's in. Um, Seven Network says he used to love a wet play playtime. Do you remember wet playtime? Yeah. Everybody in. Everybody in, it's spitting. Um, someone's uh, said that they're guessing Philippe, Philippe Jacques Fortenbrae is French. He's not, he's from Wigan. <laughs> um, yeah, Ian Tushy Rushworth says recreating the TV shows of the day. A Team was another one we did. Who were you when you played 18? Normally Mr. T. Do you know who I'd have been? Uh, the one that did all the impressions? That like Amy, you know, that oh, the woman. The little sassy woman sidekick. Um, and also I did a lot of horror things, did a lot of zombies and Frankenstein and Dracula, that sort of thing. Now, did you play that game where you'd go, like one person was it, one person was on, everyone else would go and hide. On heat. Like hide and seek. It's like yeah. hide and seek, but there's an added danger. It's hide and seek, but when they're seeking, you have to get back to where they counted. So you have to get back to their base, and then you touch base, and in our school, you'd shout, Danny O123 home. And no. if you got home, Danny O123 home, you, you'd like, fine, you were safe. Sounds a bit confusing to me. Well, it's hide and seek, but you have to just run back. Yeah, well, we just used to ride. That's it. Did anyone else play that? Hide and seek, and then you'd have to run back to the base and shout something. Did you play tag, and did you call it tag? 
We, it might have been called Tag, yeah. We called it Tick. T-I-C-K. Then we played British Bulldog. Yeah, I, it's too rough for me. And then um, every every first day of term, I'd go with new school shoes and new trousers. And for some reason, on the end of that day, they were either scratched or scuffed or there was a hole in the trap. Or I don't know how it happened, but it just happened. Ian uh, Tosher Rothworth says it was called Tig. Tig? T-I-G in hole? It might have been. Oh, leg Tig. Tig. No, Tig. 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 Tick. We, we would say tick. Helen says it was called Block 123. Block 1, yeah, I know that. Block 123. That's what I was describing, but ours we, was Danny 123 home. Melanie Fairley says, Aki, Aki 123 myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, mar- Marbles was a big thing. Block 123. Oh, marbles was a big thing in ours. Yeah. You had different... Like, Marbles was, like, rubbish, didn't you? Didn't you just yeah. have to chase another marble, to, and if you hit it, you won? I used to lose all mine, because I sort of I was crap at it. Do you remember the one where you used to throw pennies at a wall? Yeah. And then you'd keep Wall-y. the money? It's called wall I can't remember. It was, I'm sure it was banned. I went, through, I went through a phase, actually, in the junior school, of <coughs> working at the tuck shop. Did you? Mm. <laughs> so, um, and you got a free biscuit for doing it. With dinner ladies? No, with a te- one teacher. What was being served in the tuck shop? A uh, chocolate biscuit. Like an act, like what do you mean? Like a. A chocolate biscuit and foil on it. Like a club biscuit? No, or a Kit do you Kat. remember them? Vi- like Vi- a Viscount. Vi- Viscount? Yeah, like a, mi- a minty biscuit. Yeah, and there were two PH. And then there was um, some pers- pers- some pig pig crisps. Prawn cocktail pig crisps. <laughs> and puffs. Remember puffs? No. And they were 5p or something like that. Um, what, did, could you get a cup drink with a, a pointy straw? I don't know. I, can't, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember handling, handling drinks. <laughs> I did snacks and biscuits. And um, you had to be really well trusted to be on that. On, on that. What, a, t- a some, tuck shop? Because some kids used to sort of do wolf biscuits and help themselves. Didn't have a tuck shop. No, you must be just had a fry a tuck. We didn't have tuck in our school. Now, secondary school, high school, we had vending machines. Oh, yeah, we did. And we had clicks machines. You know, the soups. <laughs> we didn't have clicks machines. Um, you know, the orange, hot lemon. Like, uh, the only place I remember click, clicks machine is after swimming on a Saturday. And the only good one in it was a hot chocolate. Everything else was rank. The well, veg- I... vegetable soup was rank. The coffee was rank. The tea was rank. I like a hot chocolate if I get a Weatherspoon's endless cup. Um... Uh, Chris Brunner says he used to play Scabby Queen. <laughs> Scabby Queen was played at secondary school. Scabby Queen? It was a card game, and if you lost, you got your knuckles knocked. Oh, I was, oh, I was, yeah. I was called Bloody Mary. Oh, you'd get, you'd rack it down your knuckles. Yeah, the whole packet. The whole pack. The the rough boys played that sort of game. Oh, I love the rough Scabby Queen. I was expecting it to be a bit more dirty. Than secondary school. Cards. Secondary school, I'd have been plaiting someone's hair somewhere. <laughs> Um, Pete Potofsky at break. Me and my best friend Craig. Hello, Pete. Didn't know you were here. Me and my best friend Craig used to put tennis balls down our top and pretend we were the girls from the Human League. <laughs> I think Pete Potofsky might be one of my favourite people that I've never met. I want we to, to go we, to we, 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 to, we used to that with our dogs' um, tennis balls. <laughs> what boobs? Put down our t-shirts. <laughs> Who would you pretend to be? One of my mum's friends. <laughs> I am Miss Brenda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And with a, you know, with a sweet cigarette. Oh, gives us, gives a match. Oh. Your women that you pretended to be were always right common, weren't well, they? Well, that's all I knew. <laughs> the slappers <laughs> and gobby housewives. Mine would be like GI Joe action women. Yeah, like what's her name? Jean Vernon. What's her name? You take your <laughs> Jean Bellend. Jean Bellend. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we were like, we were like, what fishwives? <laughs> ah, darling. <laughs> How's your fellas? All right, on night. <laughs> oh, oh, James Brett says, Queenie, Queenie, who's got the ball? Oh, my mum. Do you know? Is I know she that. big or is she tall, small? Mum taught me that game. I haven't got it. It isn't in my pocket. I tell you what, I was always it was in, always in my pocket. I was impressed with girls at school with like skipping ropes. Some yeah, of them, some of them like little cheeky bit of double dutch. Yeah, yeah. double decking, <laughs> double dipping. Um, <laughs> When they used to do like two ropes at the same time. Do you remember, like, do you remember them games as well? Clapping yeah. games. 
But I was impressed by the skipping ropes because they'd be like jumping two ropes at the same time, or the legs would be around the <laughs> around the necks, which come in handy a few years later for some of them. <laughs> did, I, did anyone else do so? <laughs> this one, this one Cinderella did. dressed in yellow after school. <laughs> Oh, here, we, here we go. I belong to a gymnastics troupe. Oh, you didn't. No, you didn't. A gymnastics troupe. You? A gymnast? <laughs> yeah. And, um, With ribbon? You had to get your... You were working towards getting your bagger awards. British Association of Gymnasts. Please don't tell me you were a gymnast. Mum, didn't I... T- Mum, tell Alan that I used to go to gymnastics For after a, how long? For about a week? No, I got a few... I think I got three baggers. You had to do that whole thing where you, when you finish a move, you go like that. Bag of chips, more like. <laughs> bag of one, Jane Wagner. Jane, Wa- Jane got bag of one. I think you could get bag of one for doing a forward roll. Um, right. Next subject is... Oh. We've been chatting about this. So, my school dinners. Um, <laughs> obviously, my favourite school dinner... Junior one Christmas meal where we had to bring in a china cup and saucer and Alan still didn't believe me and we had to make our own placemats and then you'd get a special Christmas Who dinner. Who gave... Did you bring your own food in? No, like the dinner ladies would prepare a Christmas feast for the room and I think we'd have it family style. We had to bring our own food in for Christmas party. <laughs> I think it came through. The dinner ladies like all came came through like in you know like no. in a posh restaurant. Put it what, down. Like the thief to cook the wife and her lover. Yeah. But it would oh. be in the middle of the table, and then you'd serve yourselves. Roasted hog, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's my favourite dinner. But school dinners. I didn't stay for school dinners in secondary school at all. I used to go home. So my favourite school dinner is at home with mum, and this is before mum was working in the bookshop. Such a pikey school dinner. I'm not meant to say pikey. Naughty word. Um, cheese spread sandwiches, white bread, cut into triangular. Peanuts on the plate, loose, salted. And a cup of soup. You sell that sometimes now, don't you? Pebble meal on the telly. Judy Spires. Let's watch. <laughs> um, I have to laugh at Melanie's. She wrote this earlier. Um, hers was hot dog but normal sausage <laughs> there's not hot dog it's a normal sausage in the bun I think she means yeah we used to have them with onions um, my favourite was well can I put can I say two things yeah one was definitely concrete slag chocolate concrete slag concrete, chocolate concrete slag yeah it was amazing tell me about the the serving of the chocolate slag already served in bowls just placed in front of you. No, you get one. But you'd have to. Would you have to go as a kid? A tray. To to dinner lady. Blackboard, everything on it. Then a long sort of ser- you know, like a counter service. But you see, primary school we would sit and it was served to us. Only when we were really small. But when we when we were like for five or six, get up and get it yourself. No, because if you're in junior, th- if you're in junior three, I think you do the metal tin that Melanie was talking about. And if you're in junior four, you would serve the kids. We did no serving. Food. No, no, nothing was served. You got your own. I might be really wrong. If Ewan was in, he'd be able to remember all. Really the small primary school kids got their thing by the dinner ladies or the teacher. Oh, I don't remember. But as soon as you could walk, you were getting your own grub. I'm sure. I do. I'm sure. I remember dinner ladies coming like in a book in a row and putting food down. How many dinner ladies did you have? Three hundred. <laughs> no, but I was in the little school, wasn't I? Oh yeah. There's only three teachers. No, I was just huge, so you had to get get it get it yourself. <laughs> um so it was all like just there's a plates already thing and just get one and stuff would be added to it. And then in secondary school it was more like a factory canteen, wasn't it? Yeah. You get served. Yeah. Oh I ain't you my darling <laughs> <laughs> What have they got six on? They're the kids. <laughs> oh how's the taters today, sweetheart? Secondary school, I didn't stay for dinners, but when I was about 15 and I'd sort of, we wasn't getting bullied anymore and I was mates with Caroline, then I started having school dinners and I used to love things like chips and like a cheese and onion quiche. I was veggie as well. Yeah, so we, did, we didn't have chips every day. Or oh, you see, that's my other favourite meal was the flan. <laughs> cheese and egg flan. It was you the, make a cheese flan, is it, that why you like one? Yeah, it was done in squares. <laughs> he makes a square flan. And it was only about that high. But it was, oh, you could smell it. It's always cheese flan today. Smell it. 
I best to have kids. Um, but we didn't have chips every day. When I was 15, 16, maybe it was sixth form. But I remember we were able to go past the queue. We wouldn't have to queue for school dinners. Oh, yes. So I was proper like... I imagined I was like Rizzo, but I was more Patty Simcox. But I'd go to the front of the queue. <laughs> What's hot, Marion? And you just grab an apple and go, Apple G, thank <laughs> you, see you tomorrow. <laughs> but also, like you with Tuck Shop, I used to um, go and work parents' evening. <laughs> oh, we, I used to volunteer for that, just for a laugh, though. So I'd make teas and coffees and biscuits at parents' evening, and we'd go around on a trolley and serve mm. it to people. So I had, like, insider knowledge of the dinner lady's realm. Well, we used to get the, you know, the sort of family circle tins of biscuits. Yeah. And then take the tape off, take the lid off, and give all the parents the shit ones. And then have the pink wafers yourself. Yeah, have the good ones. Would you say the pink wafers the best? Oh, no, mine was the... Um, uh, One with jam and a smile. Biscuit with a, with a foil on it. Ooh, you, you love you, that, you, don't you? You only got two in the whole tin. They, you think they're posher because they've got foil on, don't you? Well, they're a bit, Individually they're wrapped. They had an orange cream on it as well. Now... We had three dining halls oh. at school. Yeah, see? We had one. Hot, one hot dinners, which was where the rougher dinner ladies mm. were. One was cold dinners, which was the salad, salads and that sort Salad bar. Thing. And then the other one was for people who bought pat lunches. <laughs> and I would go home. Because I lived quite close to school, so I'd pop on my pebble mill. Only it'd smell of vinegar and gravy, wouldn't it? I mean, there's something nice about school dinners, though, isn't there? There is. We're... <laughs> Unless it was cabbage day, when it would just, the sulphurous smell would be pumped out. We've yeah. had a bit of a school dinner tonight, haven't we? Pasty and chips and beans. Mm. One of those in, days, because this got us thinking of it. In honour of today, yeah. Um, let's have a look. I'm missing lots of your comments. Um, I hope you're enjoying our little chit-chat. Um, Simon B, fish cakes, mash, served with an ice cream scoop. Now that's reminded me of something from school dinners. The scoop? <laughs> no. It would be potato. You must be don't get it. But it was like in a sort of, like an ice cream. Whip. Oh, do, yeah. Well, and then it was whip. baked. On mince? No, it would just be loose on a plate. Oh, okay. But it was like a whip of ice, whip of potato, like an ice cream flake. But it would be then baked again, so it had like a crisp shred. Yeah, I don't know what they were called. Uh, we, used to, we used to have shepherd's, uh, shepherd's pie. But the mince was baked like, like a leathery block with one of those things on it. One of those curly little yeah. um, potato dog eggs. But liver was liver was the day we didn't like liver. Little um, Mistress Darcy's just made me giggle here. At secondary school, I was told off by the deputy head for changing the menu from cheese flan to cheese fanny. <laughs> I thought he was going to say cheese flange. I thought it was going to be cheese flange. Alex Johnson, I remember dinner lady and infants looked like Wurzel... G- One dinner lady and infants looks like Wurzel Gummidge screaming at kids who didn't eat everything and the dinners were horrid. She made me cry a few times to the point my mum complained. Well, Alex Johnson, that brings us on to our last of our five topics tonight, which is... Favourite dinner lady. I don't remember any dinner ladies by name at all. Mine, I'm going to bring her up again. I think it's the sixth time I brought her up. <laughs> And it's Kitty, who looked like Charles Bronson, and she worked at the uh, my Shakespeare school. And See, when you she was a rough as fuck. When you've mentioned her, I've always thought of Charles Manson. No, Charles. You Bronson. know that that hippie killer. But now that I know it's Charles Bronson, it's even funnier. She looked a little bit Mexican, <laughs> with salt and pepper hair curled. She had those little sort of Charles Bronson eyes. She had a mustache like him, um, uh... and. Uh, she would gather, uh, I'd call them wet kids, kids who've got no friends. You know, you know, we, you know those girls at school? They like line up holding hands. Yeah, and they'd just add on. <laughs> and they'd go around like, like a little gang. And Kitty was, she'd attract these wet girls. Was she like top dog of the wet gang? Yeah. So it'd be like, um, you know, when there's like two wet girls in your class. And I don't mean, I'm not being horrible when I say wet. I mean, like, they're just two girls and they just, that's all that they are, two friends. Then one's off with like <laughs> with the mumps. So, so the other way. So this one's just like I've so got no one to play with. <laughs> so that would <coughs> she would as soon as Kitty came out because Kitty would do the survey. She'd be solo, sort of like wandering, and she'd wait Kitty. till Kitty came out and hold Kitty's hand, <laughs> and then another wet girl would hold. 
than if a kid was told off or, or... Would Kitty not, when she had two wet girls, like put them together and let them run free? No, it was they kept adding on. <laughs> a bit like a sort of like um, like, like a horror movie. Like the human centipede. <laughs> yeah, but not. No. But just with hands. And so they became sort of little sort of gang. Um, here she is, has just arrived. Um, and oh. he's, she's watching tonight with Dex Dexter. Now, here she is and Dex Dexter. We send our love to you as well. Yeah. Because we know that you've lost one of your friends um, a few weeks ago. And uh, it was a funeral or memorial service yesterday. And um, our friend Erica. Um, remembers. I think it's remembers. Alex from Which, Billy Elliot. So, yeah. lots of love to you boys. Um, uh, and here she is has said that Dex is like a dinner lady. Is he? <laughs> She is a Dex is a bit like a dinner lady. I could imagine I Dex imagine in a tabard and a little like the nylon jacket, <laughs> having a cig, Clean, you know, cleaning the dinner table, having, the... having a cig by the pig bed. Because I was always a damp, had a, a damp cloth in the pocket. Did yours? <laughs> Would they wipe your face with? Yeah. See, I, all I remember is my dinner ladies like this queue of dinner ladies serving food, mm. but they mustn't have been. There was one that was a mate of my mum's called Ros Kerno. Mm. I kind of remember her. She had a purdy, purdy haircut. I think we had this one woman we call her the Queen of the South because she looked like <laughs> she looked like she was on on, on like the um, she looked like she was from like um, upstairs downstairs. Oh, she was quite posh. Yeah, she had all upstairs this bright red hair that was all like piled it up, like Edwardian. And she looked like she was from one of those dramas. D- what was the, your dinner lady's ensemble, top to toe? Um, it depends how they got there. <laughs> Most of them came on bikes. So it was like um, Clark's shoes, <laughs> laces, <laughs> tan tights, wool skirts. No sock. No. <laughs> oh, okay, skirt. Skirt. I thought because they were on bikes they'd be in trousers, slacks. No, no. <laughs> wool um, skirt. Um... Polo, okay, so polo neck, polo, three thing. bangles and a polo neck, yeah. and then the nylon thing over. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember the polo neck and the nylon over. Yeah, and maybe a chain over the. No jewelry. <laughs> and one one dinner lady. Would hair be netted? No, Kitty, Just... Kitty had a lovely, <laughs> she had a lovely Charles Bronson. Just set hair that never came out. A little like hat, like those early McDonald's hats. No, only the ones behind the counter serving would have hats. <laughs> Kitties that in front of house, <laughs> like the maitre d. Yeah, like getting kids move, moving along. Come on, move along. Was Kitty never back of house? No, she didn't touch the food. <laughs> Although she used to come round with a tin of t- potatoes. Say, do you want any seconds? I bet you loved <laughs> Kitty seconds. No, there was a line for that outside, and if you if you joined the seconds line, you were look really frowned upon. Oh, because it would look like you were, you had no money. Yeah. And sometimes they'd let five of you in. <laughs> and if you're number six, sorry, no more. You were a bit shamed. No night, Mark. No night, dolls. Um, Jason Darcy says they all had awful green overalls on buttoned up. Um, BG Bear says, favourite dinner lady playground supervisor was Mrs. Satterswaite. Um, Miss Poulton was nice as well, but smelt of mildew. Um Mildew mixed with Cotti de, Cotti de, Mo, de la Monte and face powder. Um, yeah, some of them were sort of quite well to do. Pete Potofsky, I'm not sure who he's, who he's talking about here. It might be a dinner lady, but we called her beautiful young model. She was a young dinner lady in her 20s. She used to wash up by the window. So at break, me and Craig, who with their tennis, boob, tennis ball boobs, would go and chat to beautiful young model and ask her what boys she was seeing. <laughs> and we had another dinner lady who, for some reason, used to collect Kit Kat wrappers for charity. <laughs> and um, you should give you a polo mint if you gave her a Kit Kat wrapper. Kit Kat. And some people would like just give her like Kit Kat wrappers that they found in like a, a doctor, <laughs> like hoarding. You know what I mean, <laughs> just like, just for desperate for a mint. Yeah. Do you remember lollipop ladies? Yeah. Now I had a favourite lollipop lady. She was the Scottish. <laughs> she was the Scottish lollipop lady. I can't give her a name. But we used to like her a lot. Yeah, we she used to. to she used to walk us over even when we were eighteen. Yeah, we used to have one. All right, my lovelies. Um, I, I know it's it's we've run over late tonight. It is now nine twenty, so I'm going to play you all a finale, um, which I think will be fun. Let me just get rid of these so we can remind you that if you've enjoyed tonight's show, you can tip us. 
using this QR code or this address here, um, which you can use PayPal or your credit card to send us a tip or a donation, which goes towards making our wigs bigger and better and our costumes sassier. Um, but we are going to have a lock-in for those of you who want to hang out. Um, I just know that some of you are now drifting off and not going off to bed. And I don't want you to miss the finale because I was dead proud of finding this. And if here she is, is still here, you'll enjoy this too. So this, I'd never seen it before, is a Sue Pollard sitcom where she sings the theme tune. So enjoy, and we will see you for a lock-in on the other side of this. And if you're going, good night. See you next week. Bye. Is it right? Is it so unusual? Is it right or wrong? When you think that nothing will surprise you, someone different comes along. Is it so unusual? Just a passing wind. <laughs> the kids. I never dreamed you'd have to look after me as well. Well, it's a funny thing, madam, but... Uh, yes? I did. <laughs> No, I've not. So I think it only did the pilot. I don't think there's oh. a series of it. Sue Pollard and Gordon Jackson, the whole episode is on YouTube. Um, I think he's like her butler. But the weird thing is, you've got to go and watch it. Here she is. Watch this Sue Pollard sitcom. Because throughout the episode, she sings. <laughs> it's like Ali McBeal. <laughs> there's like musical montage moments. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy life according to. Sorry, that there was these these pilots that were one-offs that just didn't amount to anything, and then they just go down with them. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it was ever on telly. It's on Sue Pollard's YouTube channel. Um, I think Sue Pollard might have been a bit loud then for you, but that's because I wanted Alan to hear it because <laughs> we have all the clips really low in here, so we don't we don't hear them as well. Oh, so sorry, you. sorry about your ears. Oh, look who's just rocked up. Do you want to look at this? Yeah. Alex Clark. No. So, Alex Clark. Oh, yes, she's... Oh. What the Jiminy Christmas have you been singing? We would like to know what song has been sung tonight. I See, I'm, I'm thinking it's supposed to be like a, a Welsh male choir. I put... I thought... Well, I'd love it to be like a little rock, rock, I, rock band. I thought it was More Than In Love by um, Kate Robbins. Kate Robbins. Do you have a guess before he writes down what he's been singing? Well, I thought it'd be the um, Kathy Staff song, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Benny. Um, yeah, t Timmy, watch it. It's The music is by Styles and Drew, who I'm sure you and Dex most probably know, because they write lots of musicals. Um, so see if you can find the master copy of Sue's single, Is It So Unusual? Um, 
Dear Lord, that's a loud clip. I'm so sorry it was really loud. Alex Johnson says the speaker's nearly blown off the TV because Sue was so loud. Oh, I'm sorry, my loves. Day by day. (laughs) And Alex says we should have um, ended with a clip of dinner, ladies. Oh, we should have. We should have, wouldn't we? Yeah. Um, So I hope you've had fun tonight. It's been nice being back, hasn't it? Yes, it always seems ages, doesn't it? It's... uh, and nice been sharing our little school memories, haven't we? A little bit different. We could go on for it. Could go on for hours, couldn't we? Somewhat different. We'll do another school one. It is fun. And we missed all your comments, but I'm sure you. Um... Well, this was planned for when um, schools went back. Yeah, but, but since I was... you've been busy, we we put it on. We put it on the back burner. Hold on. Oh. Like yesterday's cabbage. No news from Alex yet of what song that's been sung. Could have been um, a little bit World in Union. You know that, what's that Bassy one? Is it World in Union? Taffy Rotti. Yeah. <laughs> Sue was great in Gimme, 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 says Alex Johnson. Sue was hilarious on Benadorm, says Seven Network. And Alex is surprised us all, but he was singing The Roadside Fire by Vaughan Williams. I don't know that one. <laughs> don't We'd know. have to get you to demonstrate. Has it been sung by Patsy Palmer or someone that we would know? Did anyone cover it in El Dorado? Um, Alex and Mark have just been uh, to the filming location of a lower low, haven't they? Yeah. Which must be in the UK, yeah? Uh, yeah, I can't remember where they said it's it It's got was. a blue plaque. And they also went to um, one of the filming locations of Keeping Up Appearances, didn't they? Oh, did they? Yeah. They did, yeah. A little tour. A little camp tour. Do, 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 do. Uh, I tell you what, it's been really, really popular on Facebook. Is our bullseye? Yeah, we've had about twenty-eight mil- twenty-eight million, million twenty-eight thousand views on that. Um, Nibbles and Bubbles says she's missed Scylla tonight. Yeah, Scylla's not risen from well, her grip, has she? Well, she's not sang Happy Birthday to me because we've got the Happy Birthday to you. But she's not here. The ghost of Scylla Black's not oh, in. Oh, yeah, you're right. She's not we here, don't know she? who she is, so we don't know who she is. Kim and Jens are not here either. No. So we're sending love to Kim and Jens. Well, the Dawlish boys, I think. Dawlish they boys aren't here. Might not have their internet yet. So like these are the clues. I don't think Kim and Jens can be Scylla. They wouldn't know enough. You see, that's it. When you say when you're not on for weeks, people start finding other ways of entertainment. Uh, Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward, who pro- produces and presents here, she is um, the comedy show on YouTube, um, has just recently interviewed Sue Pollard. Um, it's a great two-hour interview. I listened to it in Norway, and it's on Travel.Radio. So if you go to either Here She Is' website or Travel.Radio, you might be able to listen again. But he's just said he's getting Sue Pollard on his Here She Is show, so she'll be joining him on the bed. So that'll be fabulous. Oh, I bet she'll be fun, won't she? Oh, yeah, she was really fun. He did this interview with her, met her in town to do it, and um, he was then out with her for about eight hours. She went out in town with him. They had a, had a few drinks and he said... That every, doesn't surprise me. He said, she's such a national treasure. Everyone was like stopping on the street to shout, Hi Sue, hi dear. She's just an amazing woman, isn't she? Yeah, bless her. Um, so yeah, we don't know where the ghost of Scylla is. and We don't know who the ghost of Scylla is, so we can't summon her. I've got a couple of Scyllas at, at my fingertips. Oh. But not that one. I can, I can show you Scylla eating an Oxo cube. We're getting very original meals all of a sudden. One day and went to the larder, found some fruit and the oxo. And I was going through the ritual of rubbing the oxo on the orange juice. And it was lovely. Oh, it was so good. And then I thought to myself, my. See. Naughty Scylla. Um. Maybe Storm Agnes blew, blew Scylla off the internet crypt. Yeah, she's most probably busy haunting somewhere else, isn't she, at the moment? She's most like, where, where are the boys? And you know, We've not been here for four weeks. She's, so put feet, she's put her feet up. She's getting ready for Halloween. It's a difficult time for ghosts. Um, well, it's been lovely hanging out with everyone tonight. We, we're we about done, aren't we? Yeah, we need to let, must be Peggy out. We do. For our little doo-doos. Um, Philip Jack Fortenbrow would like to know: Has Sue Pollard ever shown her norks on TV, like Ruth Madoch? He says, "I think not." I don't think she would, would she? No, but I have found, and I was going to play it tonight, but I can't play it 
there is on YouTube a an hour long program hosted by Bernard Manning which is a competition of strippers in the 70s. So all these women with their norks out and he's like interviewing them with a fag on going, oh, you're a pretty one. Well, where'd you come from, love? Amateur strippers. And it's co-hosted by Sue Pollard. Sue? And Bernard and Sue sing a duet and I was going to play it. They sing Lady... Uh, that's why the lady is a tramp. And what, what I did watch... But you can see loads of boobs in the background. What I did watch when you were away was... It's on YouTube and it's when Bernard Manning... Did his um, he did like a program his bit tree after he died? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so weird. So it's like it's like him talking about his funeral, and then you see like Bernard in his coffin and everything dead, and it's him talking about his, you know, going up there and what what's going to happen when I go up there? Oh, am I going down there? Really weird. Do you remember when he was spoofed by um, Victor Louis Smith and he did something like an anti drugs? I'm sure it's Victor oh, Louis it was Smith. Oh, called Cake. This cake is going to kill you. It's bloody awful. You, you, it, it, it's like swells your neck. Jason <laughs> so Rigby says, for some reason, he had that on VHS. I think he's talking about the stripper competition with Bernard Manning and Sue Pollard. The whole thing's on YouTube. I was watching an old um, Coronation Street episode. Uh, like, was it like Christmas or something? And um, Annie Walker goes to like a, a dinner and dance with uh, Mrs. Locum. And it's Ben Be- and Manning's doing a Ben and Manning's doing a stand-up. Oh, really? In Corrie? Yeah, and he's like being like, oh, there's a woman walking out, you know, and they're like that, raising their eyebrows, like, oh. Oh, wow. Right, lovelies, we should go, shouldn't we? Chris Morris did Brass Eye, cake. and that was the cake. It was Chris Morris. All right, lovelies, that was Brass Eye, says everyone. Good. We've enjoyed doing it tonight, haven't we? Yeah, of course, we enjoy doing it every week. Um, have a lovely weekend, chaps and chapesses. I'm wondering what I'll end with. Oh, I know what I'll end with. And we'll be here next Wednesday, won't we? Yeah, we'll definitely be here next Wednesday. We might do a pop-up. You never know. We should have done a quiz this weekend, shouldn't we? Should have done. We can't do it now. We're too too late to get ready. It needs a lot of preparation, doesn't it? We've got to make all the slides and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But we'll 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 definitely do one in the future. Um, All right, loves. Um... I think we're off for a concrete slag, aren't we? Nice piece of concrete slag. A and a bacon roll. And a cat of tea. All right, lovelies. It's been gorgeous. Um, we will say goodnight. And we'll, S- well, say they. We'll leave you with a nicer little song now. Goodnight. Goodnight. Bye. Bye.